Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for September 27th, 2019. We are TOSindicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. Uh, in today's report, we'll cover two separate uh, sort of uh, P&Ls based on the type of trader you were today. Um, and so in yesterday's video, we ended talking about uh, how Friday, at least last Friday, had kicked our ass. Uh, and to be extra cautious, headed into this Friday and look for any signs to switch on over to the conservative volatility model. We also know from earlier this week, at least given the way we've headed in, um, that the volatility box, or more specifically, I should say, tweets and news events, uh, have exceeded the aggressive volatility box for the most part. Uh, and really, just uh, we've had to switch on over to the conservative box because uh, th these tweets have been overreacted this week, right? And so today, for example, uh, we had news come out of the White House considering uh, the whole uh, idea of restricting portfolio investments into China. Uh, and this sent the market down lower. And so the, there, there's a couple things here, right? So first is, it was a news event. But two is in the news event, uh, it said the White House was weighing this idea. Not that this was a decided idea or something that's put into action, but just weighing. So the first tells you that there is going to be a reaction of some sort. And we know from the context of this week that the reactions have been uh, more extra than necessary in the sense of the aggressive volatility box model has not been able to contain them. And on the second part, the idea around the word way, we know that this is, uh, I think Ophir, if you guys follow Ophir on Twitter, he's a huge advocate of this, right? It's to read through the BS of, uh, of media speak and to understand well, what is the actual headline here. And the idea of ways tells us nothing. It's just someone's considering it. Fantastic. We consider a million ideas every single day. And so that then gives me permission that this isn't something concrete, uh, but it's something that you might be able to fade. And so that's where today, as soon as that news event hit, uh, you conservative models were the ones to go for. Uh, it was fairly obvious very quickly. And even if I think most of you emailed us that you were already using conservative models because it's a Friday, uh, which might end up being a rule on its own. Um, but really, we're just observing this idea of news and uh, what this week has looked like. And once again, acting like a machine, absorbing the information of the week that we've been able to observe. Uh, and then we spit that out in terms of learnings, right? It, it's machine learning on a human form. Uh, anyway, so Using the conservative model today, in the S&P futures, we had one trade that set up, uh, and which was a winner, and so that gave us a 1075 net gain. We had two trades in the NASDAQ futures, and only one of them was a winner for a total net P&L of plus 660. Uh, same with the Dow, so plus one, and uh, that, that trade was a winner, so that was a plus 325. Uh, and finally, two trades in the Russell. Again, same thing as the NASDAQ. The second one was a loser, and so that was a net P&L of plus 445. Uh, and finally, one trade in the crude oil futures, which was a winner only on the first contract, and that was a plus 300. And so that took us to seven trades in total uh, with a 71.4% winning rate for a total P&L of $2,805, which uh, headed into the week then put us up just slightly positive at 371.25. Uh, we were down 243. Uh, or sorry, 2,433.75 headed into the week. And so here's sort of just the, the dichotomy, right? So as using the conservative model, you had a positive week, uh, granted a very, very small positive week, nothing to write home about, but nonetheless, a positive week. And that's just by observing these models. Uh, but we also have those traders who are slightly more aggressive. And we're going to cover both results because uh, neither one was right or wrong. I think it just depends on your style. And you might be able to tell we are very quick to switch to the conservative model whenever possible, especially with the way the week has been going on, um, it's just it is something where you want to be more cautious than aggressive, right? Don't let Friday sort of uh, blow your account up or something of that sort, um, but live to fight another day. And so now let's take a look at what would have happened using the conservative uh, aggressive models. So using the aggressive models now, uh, your results you could see are much different, right? So you ended the week still red, um, not a huge amount of red, all things considered. Again, uh, 383, 7.50 for the week. Uh, that, that's a, especially considering this sort of week, uh, you basically saved, uh, you saved face here. Uh, just in case you did this, uh, you shouldn't beat yourself up just giving you that message. Uh, your, your entries were also valid. Uh, and I think given that you're an aggressive trader, you would have also reaped the benefits of being an aggressive trader for the past 12 weeks, uh, where you made a boatload more than, uh, I think your, your best day has been 3x, 3x this. Uh, something of that sort, uh, 3x the entire week, so you're, you're doing just fine. 
But let's cover those trades just in case that you did happen to be a bit more aggressive today, uh, especially with the way the week was. Don't recommend it. And with the sort of news event, don't recommend that. But um, let, let's see what happens. So S&P futures, we had one trade. This trade was a loser. Uh, NASDAQ, we had three trades. One of those three were winners. Dow, one trade, which was also a loser. Stay, uh, the Russell, both trades were losers. Uh, the bonds were your only saving hope today, and uh, crude was also a loser. So again, if you were a little bit more aggressive today, then your P&L was far different than, uh, than ours, right? So you had nine trades uh, where your winning rate wasn't all that high. You ended the day red today, uh, and you had what we had imagined this week to happen, continuing to use the aggressive volatility models, which is to end on uh, in a red week, which is our first red week in, I think, 12, 13 weeks, something like that. Uh, so it's been a really long time. So again, it's it's a loss that you can easily suck up in terms of uh, the profits you've made, um, but it's not not nice to see. I, I, I like to say uh, I hate losing more than I like to win. Uh, and that's it just I think most of you are very competitive, just like ourselves. And so this isn't something you want to see. Um, but I think when I sent out the note of using the conservative models, a lot of you said or emailed us back telling us that you were already doing already doing the same uh, and that it was nice to hear that uh, you had confirmation. So that is awesome to hear that you guys had automatically done that. Uh, well, good on you. Um, also, last reminder. Uh, we're going to be uh, participating in the Mr. Top Step Traders Symposium. If you'd like to join, it's next week. Uh, it's a six-day immersive educational experience. Um, I think I've already talked plenty about who's presenting. Um, we're going to pre be presenting ourselves. And, and again, if you don't want to sign up for this and you just want our free presentation, uh, happy to send that out as well so you don't have to spend the $10. Uh, but if you'd like to hear these other speakers, then uh, that's up to you if you'd like to purchase a ticket. All right, with that, let's get into charts. All right, so we'll start with the S&P. Uh, and so I want to start with the aggressive uh, volatility box, and we'll just focus on the S&P here. And then for the rest of the charts, uh, we'll use the conservative so we don't make this an incredibly long video. And so our news event hit in this candle right here. And if you're watching the markets live, uh, so in the case of the NASDAQ, that was an 80-point candle. Uh, in the case of the S&P, let's measure it real quick. Uh, that's close to a 24 point candle, right? That's, that's insane. And most of this move happened if you were watching it almost instantly. And so I know most of you also are very hesitant to place uh, orders ahead of time. And so in this case, you, you actually came out on top for, for a change, uh, where you had the ability to, to pick one of the better prices. Uh, but if you saw this price action taking place and you already hadn't placed your orders and you were a bit more cautious, um, then this would have been your cue that in almost one candle in less than, I think, a minute, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, you blew past all of the ranges and uh, you could tell that this was a serious news event that at least the market was going to react to. Right? And uh, just a quick second before we continue, you can also see that we blew past the models and for the rest of the day, uh, we ended up continuing to melt down lower. Right? Uh, but now, Let's go back to uh, the, the the benefit of having two models, right? So if, you, if you're a subscriber to something like, say, AutoChartist, you have access to only one model, and that's the aggressive model. Fantastic. So either you're picking this edge or you're getting screwed here. In our case, for our traders, we had the idea of the conservative volatility box, which is exactly what you could have switched on over to. And we'll take a look at the conservative volatility box across the board. Um, but in the case of the S&P, it gave you an opportunity to buy this dip, especially considering that we had that uh, the, the second idea that I talked about in the beginning, which is the idea of the word ways, right? That tells you that this isn't something concrete, um, but it, it's just it's a reaction. And you can fade this reaction, um, but it is a news event that the market's reacting to. So you want to fade this reaction from a place where you have a, a true edge. And this is uh, like your two standard deviation plus edge, if you were to think about it in terms of probabilities, that's about an 80 uh, plus percentage um, edge that you're trying to fade against, right? And so that's something that I'm comfortable doing. And so here was where we had an opportunity to go long. Our stop was outside of the volatility box. We gave it eight points of room. First target was the eight points, which was hit in this candle right here. And our second target was at the target line, which was also hit for 13.5 points. Uh, and then we used edge of hour entries in the next hour, uh, just as free information, our orders are canceled at 55. Uh, we've talked about this plenty of times, and so this for us is information. We did enter the second trade on the NASDAQ and the Russell, which are our second uh, losers. We'll talk about that, but uh, what we see is we ended up stopping out what would have been 
the uh, conservative model. It's a Friday, and at this point, I'm really not looking to trade for the rest of the day. And so I'll take this free information, use that as a sign to go ahead and just disconnect uh, and go celebrate my Friday. All right, next, let's move on to the Dow. Same thing here. So using the conservative model, you had an opportunity to get long. Um, your stop was outside of the volatility box, 65 points wide. Your first target was a 65, which was hit. Your second target was at the target line, which we fell just a little bit short of. And so here I'll cue Ron's point of trailing your stops up. Uh, and so if you had trailed your stop at the low of each candle, um, then in, while we missed this target, you would have still been able to get, uh, I think, another 65 points from that second contract as we stopped out right here. And so that's just an idea to keep in the back of your head. Once again, free information, stopped out. Uh, if you had taken an edge of our entry, we do not. Uh, we did take this again on the Russell and NASDAQ, which we'll cover in a second. But for us, free information and our sign to just stop trading for the rest of the day and call it a week. Now moving on to the NASDAQ. Uh, so the NASDAQ here gave us plenty of opportunities to get in. Uh, then we had our stop outside of the volatility box, 25 points wide. We hit that 25 in this candle, and we also ended up hitting our second target in this candle, which is 42 points. Now, we canceled our edge of hour entry here, but this technically then triggered another short, which gave you your targets. And so at this point, we think that the NASDAQ is very well respecting the conservative models. And for us, that's our sign to continue to see trades that take place before the 55 candle. And so our second trade in the NASDAQ took place as we slammed into the volatility box entry lines. Our stop was outside of the volatility box. We gave it 17 points of room, and we were stopped out on that second trade right here. Uh, and this was uh, the pattern where then we just once, and we've talked about this plenty of times, if you stop out of the conservative volatility box, that too is information on its own, and that's what we trade on, information uh, that the market wants to head lower. So, uh, we, I know one person who took this trade um, essentially with options and buying a put across the board where you did get a little bit of follow through headed into the end of the market. Um, not something that we were interested in trading, but just an idea using this sort of information. All right, now let's move on to the Russell. Um, so same exact thing that we've seen. So we had an opportunity to get long the Russell. Our stop was outside of the volatility box, 4.5 points wide. Uh, we hit our first target in the very next candle, and then we ended up hitting our target line as well for 10.4 points um, before we ended up making our second entry, um, which was in the subsequent hour. We had our entry before our 55 candle where we canceled the orders on the uh, conservative volatility box. So our stop was outside of the volatility box. We gave it three points of room. And once again, just like the NASDAQ stopped out here. And if we notice, once again, head it continued to head down lower. And so this is one of those moves that you could continue to play if you wanted to play it with the micros where you're willing to take, say, a risk outside of the volatility box to see what kind of fall through you get. That's one option. Another option to play it with defined risk is an at the money put option in the case of where we broke down lower. Again, keeping in mind that this is already happening at 10 a.m. Pacific, and so you only have a few more hours left to see this follow through. Uh, so keep that in mind. The earlier that this sort of break happens, uh, the, the more of an edge you have in terms of playing the move and trying to see if you get any sort of follow through. And finally, let's talk about crude oil. And so in crude, uh, once again, you had the opportunity uh, where we had all those trades trigger to go log. Your stop was outside of the volatility box. You had uh, 30 sets of rube. And you ended up hitting the 30 cents. You ended up going to 400, or uh, sorry, 48 cents uh, until you continued to head down lower. And then that was the only entry in crude. Not really something we were looking to participate towards the end of the market anyways. All right, so hopefully this starts to give you an idea of two different ways that you could have played today. Uh, if you were a bit more aggressive, you did not end the week positive, And that's okay. Once again, you've ended 12 weeks in a row positive. It's okay. This is probabilities. I just like to manage expectations. There is no perfect system, not even ours. Uh, we like to think it is, and it's almost like an ATM machine every time we get a trade. Uh, but this week, it wasn't the case, and that's okay. Again, remember all the profits you've made. Uh, just manage your emotions, and don't let this be a reason to start to change your rule set or really start to, to worry about anything. If you were the more cautious trader today, uh, you did end the week positive. Um, you had a nice day today, and you had a nice day yesterday uh, where you were back to starting to see some of the probabilities we're used to seeing with the volatility box. 
Uh, you ended the week marginally up. Um, again, nothing to write home about. Uh, don't gloat. Don't let this get to sort of overconfidence on the same note of managing emotions. Uh, as, as Rambo said, if you guys watched that clip, it's just another trade. Uh, we are machines. We're trying to train ourselves to be machines uh, and start to just make observations, make learnings, and continue to use that to trade in a systematic, disciplined approach. We hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Uh, take a break from the screens. Um, if you made money, uh, great, celebrate. If you didn't make money, that's that's fine. Uh, still enjoy your weekend, relax. It, it's just trading. It's your profession. You need to be able to disconnect the two. Uh, have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care.